Hello, everyone. So, I am back with another evening video tonight. So, welcome back to the nursery. And if you're new, welcome to my nursery. And I am going to get her a diaper on because as you can see she already has a little washcloth over her and that is because i just wiped her off and this is layla if you don't know her she is layla and she is Dwayne awake by clea taylor dolls and she is a full body silicone as you can see and she is an addition doll, all done by Claire Taylor, completely done from start to finish by Claire Taylor. She was sculpted, molded, poured into silicone, painted, and hair rooted, all by artist and sculptor Claire Taylor of Claire Taylor Dolls. And she is my little girl, Princess Layla. And I've had her now for three and a half years in July. This year, July will be four years since she's been in my nursery. Um, she was a custom baby made just for me by Claire Taylor Dolls. And she was from one of the last editions where Claire Taylor was doing customs. So I was so blessed to get her and I'm so still just loving this baby she is truly like my baby for real so anyway since i had layla i never really bathed her <clears throat> she's never had a bath so i have like wiped her off with the washcloth maybe once and it was just a damp wet washcloth with warm water and that was it I've wiped her hair with a little warm water on the washcloth, but I never actually washed her hair. I never actually gave her a rinse off, like fully rinse off in the sink or anything. So even tonight, I didn't really put her in water. I more did more of a sponge bath where I washed her off. But this time I actually did use a little bit of Johnson's baby soap. <clears throat> and usually I don't even use that on my silicone dolls, but that was the first time of me wiping her off really ever since I got her back in 2018. So when Claire Taylor finished her, she gave her a full bath. She even sent me pictures after she gave her her first bath. So I know she had been bathed good because after you paint these silicone dolls, you have to bathe them really well. So when she came to me, she was nice and clean. She was brand new, straight from the artist to me. So I never really bathed her. And I know there's a lot of controversy on to bathe the silicone babies or not to bathe them. Is it safe to bathe them? I have had many silicone dolls up to this point at this time in my collecting journey. I've been collecting now for over eight years. And I've had over probably at least maybe 30 or more silicone dolls at this point. Most of them being Claire Taylor's dolls, some of her edition dolls, some of her kit editions that were painted by other artists, including painted where I've painted one myself. And I have bathed my dolls, actually bathed them in the tub. Like Gabriel, my Andrew by Claire Taylor, he has actually taken that I've given him since I had him from 2017 up until this point. I have bathed Gabriel at least twice in, tub, in the tub. And so far, he's fine. I've never had any problem when I bathed them. Most of the time, I only rinse them with warm water and that's about it. Like, since I wiped Layla tonight with the little um, baby soap on a washcloth, I wouldn't do that again because she doesn't need it. It's been four years almost, and she wasn't really that dirty. But I must say a little, the, like, the washcloth was white, and I could see as I was wiping her, that washcloth turned a little grayish, like she needed to be wiped off. Her hair needed to be wiped a little bit, and that's why I did it, because I felt it was time for me to wipe her. Um... But I will see, as when I was wiping her, she's perfectly fine still. Nothing rubbed off. She's painted well. 
you know, she her pain is cured well. And I'm confident that she'll be fine, just like Gabriel and all of the other babies I've had that I've bathed them. They were fine while I had them. So anyway, the one that I can attest to the most, though, is Gabriel. Because I've had him, like I said, from 2017, and he's still fine. And he is now, he was created in 2015. He's like six years old at this point, and his paint is still intact. And he definitely, I've bathed him at least twice. So for my pers from my experience, I haven't had any problem with bathing silicone dolls but other people will say you should never bathe them ever. So everybody have their own opinion on it. I'm going based on my own experience of bathing them. I haven't had any problems. I think it's how you bathe them and how often and how much soaps and stuff you're putting in the water. They don't need a whole ton of soap because it's a doll and not actually dirty, dirty. Um, and then you have to remember that they are painted. They are dolls. So you don't want to put too much soap on them. You don't want to have them immersed in a tub full of water for too long. I use the bath chairs now, the mesh bath chair where the water kind of runs through the little holes and the baby's not actually sitting in the water. And I haven't had any problems. I rinse them off with warm water. I dry them good. Like she's been laying here for a little while to air dry before I put clothes back on her. And that's basically what I do. I don't wash the hair a whole lot because the color will wash out of this mohair. And her hair is lighter than when I got her. And I had not even washed it and it turned lighter on its own. It's not much lighter though it's over the time of almost four years. But it, it has lightened even from me just spraying water in it. When I like whenever I wet it, I just use plain. Um, this is the purified bottle water I pour in this for her hair. So over that time of just spraying her hair every now and then with water, it has lightened a little bit. But other than that, she's never had her hair washed. I don't really like to wash their hair much with soap because I feel like the soap sometimes strips the color out of the mohair faster. And I have had that happen to the very first silicone doll I had. And I washed his hair with the Johnson's Baby Soap about two times because it kept bleeding the black dye and I wanted to wash it. Well, after washing it at least twice with that Johnson shampoo, his hair turned dark blue. It was no longer black. So I have experienced the um, shampoo can take out the color out of their hair. So be careful with the shampoos when you shampoo their hair. And it's seven minutes in. And guess what? This wasn't even supposed to be about bathing. <laughs> you see, when you get on these videos, you start talking about all kind of stuff that you didn't even plan on. But I figured I would just share it because I know how people feel about bathing the dolls. And it's such a like a line going down the middle of one side says bathe it's fine and then the other side says no never bathe never bathe so from my experience i haven't had any problems with bathing but it's up to the individual <clears throat> it's it's up to you what you know how you feel about it but like i said when you bathe them don't put a whole bunch of soap on them don't rub and scrub them really hard. You basically, you just want to like rinse them off. Basically, that's all you're doing is rinsing them off. You're not actually like scrubbing them as though they are really dirty or anything. So if you do that and then you just kind of towel block them like with the towel, you don't want to rub. You want to blot like this. And then you just leave them for a little while and let them dry good by the air before you redress them. This baby doesn't need powdering for the most part. She, I don't really powder her. She doesn't need it. She doesn't really get shiny. She is done in like a, a textured finish. And I love the textured finish. I think that also keeps the paint intact. It's not smooth, it's texture, and it has like a skin look to it. And it just um, doesn't really get shiny. So I do love that with her texturing. Like Gabriel, on the other hand, he's smooth. He's not textured, but still his paint stayed intact as well. So she got her diaper on now. 
And if you aren't subscribed, let me say that. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share my videos. Please comment below if you like to comment or ask any questions below the video and i'll try to answer it in my next video if you have any questions and please give the video a like so this baby has a spine back here that you can feel and it, it really feels like a real spine in there she's the one piece pour she's all poured in one piece she also has a drinking wet system so she can drink a bottle of water and wet her diaper. And she has the nice uh, wrinkly silicone, really nice silicone. And she also has a squishy tummy. And she's a portrait baby. She was made, created from a portrait of a real baby. And his name is Dwayne. And it was a little, it is a little boy. All right, so now next thing moving along, I did a small Jamie K haul. It's I say it's small, but it didn't cost small. <laughs> That's the only thing when you shop from, you know, Jamie K in those places, you get a little bit and it costs a lot, you know. It's a total difference than when you go to Walmart and you can take that same amount of money and come out with bags and bags of baby clothes. Whereas when you shop with Jamie K and Kate Quinn and all of those brands, Jockety, you come out with a little bit. You get a delivery with a little bit of stuff in there and, and, and it costs so much. But it's worth it because I do like the clothes. You know, so every now and then I don't mind doing a little haul from Jamie K or Kate Quinn or Love Baby. So this is a rib bodysuit or singlet, and it is called I think Petite Fleur. Is this print? It's like that purpley plum color. It has the little uh, what do they call these flutter sleeves? I call them butterfly sleeves, and it's um snaps in the back and this is what size did i get zero to three months so she has that singlet i bought these bloomers to pair with it this is the same i think this is called petite fleur i took them out of the envelopes and now i don't know what they're called <laughs> um and their size is triple zero our size is zero to three months so you can match the little bloomers with the little singlet. I bought the head tie, which I have to tie this myself into a bow or a knot. However you want to tie it. They're really long. So it goes with it. And I'm not probably going to put one of those on her tonight because I didn't tie it yet. And then I also bought this color. This is called that um, rose blush color, I believe. Blush is called. And then I also got this romper, which it is called, I think, oatmeal color. And I believe this is the front where the buttons are. And this is like a romper with crisscross straps and the flutter sleeves. And so you would have to put a a singlet or bodysuit or onesie underneath it and then it has like the ruffle at the waist in the back of it and that's the little print on there so she got that and all of these kind of blend where you can mix and match the, the um singlets with the bloomers or the the rompers they kind of go together then this is another romper again with the flutter sleeves and they all have like the little flowers or whatever decoration on the front this one has little ruffles on the little um the thigh area and it's a romper all of them have like these little cream color ties on it and then this one crisscrosses in the back 
and this one I'll probably will set, save it for more of warm weather. This one is that that um what do you call it muslin material or gauze material. So she got that one. Well, all of them might not be for her, but when I'm shopping from Jamie K, I tend to think of Layla. But it could be for whichever baby I have that can fit it. This is a corduroy romper in that same plum color, or it could be blush color. Also has the flowers on it, the gold buttons. Crisscrosses in the back with a button. And they also give you an extra one of those buttons just in case. And then I got this little singlet or bodysuit. This one is called the singlet. So the ones with no sleeves, like the first one I showed. This one has the long sleeve with the flutter at the top. And this one is called a bodysuit. And this is they call it dove. The color is dove. Same like different little flowers that match on the top. So you can kind of mix and match these outfits with the singlets. Um, and they have like a lookbook on the, on the Jamie K site to show you what they put with what, like how you can kind of pair up everything or mix and match it, match it. And then the, the socks come in these bags. So the first time I did an order, it was like a month or two ago, Jamie K. I got these blush color frill socks, these are called, and then... They are zero to three months size, and they're not that big, so I wouldn't get newborn. And then this time, these are called Ellie socks, and they are the ones that come up on their leg without the frill, but it has like a scallop edge, and it's the same blush color. So I'm trying to get more little socks in this color, especially now I need cream because my girls wear this color a lot. So I'm trying to collect that color sock and then I need some cream color socks. That's what I'm gonna get next time. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so tonight I am going to put her in this long sleeve bodysuit, the dove colored one because the weather all of a sudden it's been really warm down here in Georgia, but now they're saying it's going to get cool, I believe, starting from tomorrow. So I figured I'll just put her in some long sleeves. So that way she can keep this on. Even if I take the romper off, I can leave her with the um, onesie or the bodysuit. And I'm going to put this corduroy one because they had it paired up with the Dove um, bodysuit. It kind of looks like it matches these flowers in there. They they mix and match their colors differently from what I would pick. <laughs> but I'm trying to go by their little lookbook that they had. And I believe that is the bodysuit. I ordered that one because that's what they had with this romper. So I said, I'll try out something different with some different colors mixed and matched together just to see if I like it. And then I'm gonna put on the little socks, one of them pairs of them blush color socks. And I took out shoes for her to put on with the little socks. The little Crier and Company crib shoes and they are suede. And then I took out this plum colored headband since I'm not going to put on one of the headbands that came with the outfit. I'm trying to think, should I put a onesie under this because of the color? I don't think it would bleed, but I'm going to get her onesie. I'll be right back. just to be on the safe side i'm going for the onesie the last one she had on that brown one can i have your passy um i didn't put a onesie under it but she was fine and it's a brown color like a golden they call it okra i believe and she did okay in it it didn't do anything nothing ran or bled from it 
So I was happy about that because actually I should have put a singlet or a onesie under it and I didn't. I took a chance. But I, since I have been painting silicone for a couple of years now, I started painting silicone, um, I want to say at least three years ago. I'm going to unsnap this so it could be flat under her clothes. It was about three years ago. And Gabriel is the baby. I was practicing painting silicone on first because some paint had rubbed off his little ears and that is from hairsprays. And that's another thing to be, that you should be careful with when you spray your baby's hair. If the hairspray has any type of um, fragrances in it and especially oils, you don't want to just spray it all over their head where it will possibly get into their face or on their ears when it drips down. So usually, like, if I use this Johnson's, I spray it on the baby's hair brush, and then I brush their hair. I never take it and just spray it on, like, directly, on, especially on the silicone. So other than that, though, I haven't had any problems. But with Gabriel, I had to fix his ears because he did have some issue with paint rubbing off the tops of his little ears. And that was when I first began to learn how to paint silicone was with Gabriel, my Andrew by Clea Taylor. And from painting the silicone and just preparing it to paint it and the different things you have to use, the different chemicals and you have to wash. If you paint the whole baby, you're going to be washing and scrubbing off that whole silicone doll. If you're not painting the whole doll, you're going to, whatever you're going to touch up or paint or work on on the doll, you have to really scrub it and prepare it for the paint. Clean it well. And you're using different chemicals on the silicone. And as I have done that now, numerous times as I'm painting silicone, and right now, as you, not, you guys know, I'm painting sage, my full body silicone by Clea Taylor. And last year I painted Alex by Clea Taylor. Just from doing that, you really see, I see how durable silicone is. That's what it has shown me, not just for me collecting the dolls and bathing them here and there and seeing how durable they are if you take care of them and you bathe them in the right way. They are very durable. The paint is durable. If it is cured properly um, on that doll, it's very durable. Now, the matting can wear off of a silicone doll very easily, especially when they are painted smooth and they aren't textured. Definitely, the matting, you can run into those little shiny spots that you get. So... That you could have an issue where they need to be re rematted. But as far as the paint itself, I I haven't seen where that paint, if that doll is cured properly, where that paint will just rub off the doll just because you rinse the doll off or anything. And as I was saying, as I work on the silicone and just see how durable it is and cleaning it and all the chemicals and everything you use on it, that is what has made me more comfortable with handling my dolls because I, I see how durable and strong the silicone is and the paints are. And as long as you cure it properly, the, the paint does not just come off the, do the dolls. But say if you're not familiar with, you know, how your doll is and you just got it and you don't know anything about paint and silicone or anything, then I wouldn't advise you to be too, you know, take too many chances because you never know how each artist paint. Everybody paint different. And so certain things you might not want to do to that doll, especially if you just got it. You want to get to see how the doll is and everything first before you take any extra chances doing anything. You definitely, like I said, you don't want to over bathe your doll. If they don't really need bathing, I wouldn't bathe them. Um, if they don't need powder, I wouldn't powder them. And if you are going to powder them, 
I would get the um the new different matting powders they have for powdering the silicone dolls rather than rather than like before we used to use the Johnson's cornstarch and then we found as time went on that's not the best powder to use because that powder has other things in it like aloe vera and stuff like that which is actually oily so now people do not recommend most artists don't recommend using baby powder to powder the silicone dolls they more so will tell you to try to get the um different matting powders that are, are available now if you're gonna powder your silicone baby and <clears throat> that's what i usually use if i'm gonna powder them i have the finishing powder and I ordered it. Let's see. Can I remember who it is? It's, she's on Facebook. And she is. Huh, I can't think of the name of her right now. For some reason, my mind is blank. I'm looking at how do I button this, this little romper. Because it makes no sense. Like, they made these where you're supposed to see the strap on the outside. I would have preferred if the strap went inside, but that's how they have these. I noticed that. And I don't want to see the strap on the outside. But I guess that's some new style. We button it, and it's showing the little flax hanging down. The other one is the same way, the knit one. And you see... Like, they make it where you see the flaps from the, the straps. <laughs> I never seen it like that, but okay. But yeah, just me rambling, just trying to share a little information with you guys as I am changing her. I really didn't have a topic, but I just went all into that, being that I had just bathed her a little bit for the first time. I figured I would share that. And I didn't bathe her on camera because I actually didn't plan on bathing her. It was like all of a sudden I just decided to wipe her off right before I was doing the video. So it kind of wasn't planned. It was just something I decided to do spontaneously. So I didn't get to even record me wiping her off. So I'm going to put the little frill socks on her. I kind of like these colors together. They lo It looks different. It's not something I would normally pick, but I like it. So anyway, as I was saying, I think I was saying, <laughs> I'm all over the place, that I've just become more comfortable with doing, like, bathing my dolls, especially since I paint them. I just see how durable the silicone is and the paint is. And so I guess I just feel more comfortable with handling my dolls. Um, and after collecting them so long, you kind of get used to certain things with them. If you're new to collecting them, you might be a little nervous with certain stuff. But after you've been collecting them for a while, you kind of get used to certain things. And then you're not as nervous. And definitely when you start painting them, then you really get to really see what it's all about. And you get to see just how durable the silicone dolls are. Okay, so now these socks are actually a little bit big on her. They look so little, but they're not. She probably, probably could get newborn size socks. They're not that big on her, but I was thinking newborn would be too little. But actually, she probably could fit the little newborn size. So maybe I will get a pair of the newborn size socks just to try them on her. Because they won't come up so high on her leg like these are. So that is her outfit and it fits her perfectly. The singlet, the onesie rather, the bodysuit fits and the romper fits her really good. And it's all zero to three months.
And this, the things that I share is just from my own experiences. I'm not telling anybody what to do with their doll. Of course, it's up to you, you know, what you decide to do with your doll and what you feel comfortable with. So never think I'm telling you to do anything. I'm just sharing with you what I do and what I don't do and just from my different experiences over the time. But never, never am I telling you to definitely do anything. It's, it's really your choice. It's your choice what you choose to do with your babies, with your dolls. So that is Layla tonight. And I love the colors. But like I said, I think she could actually get newborn socks. Because the socks are kind of long on her. But that's my girl. And there she is. I didn't give her her passy. That's like a plum colored one. Um, the itsy ritzy silicone passies. And there's her shoes and her little sockies. And that's all for now, guys. So I'm still working on Sage and hopefully I will do a sneak peek little work in progress video. That's my plan to share him with you guys at this point to how far I've gotten with him at some point during this week. I'm not sure when. I was hoping maybe tomorrow, which is Tuesday, but now I'm not sure because I'm going to upload this video first and we're going to see how long it takes because this video is now long. It's 30 over 30 minutes. So I will get this one up hopefully by tomorrow. If it won't go up tonight, it might be Tuesday. And then I will get to Sage with his video, hopefully at some point during the week. I'm not going to say what day yet because I don't know. But as soon as I can get him together enough to share him. But anyway, guys, take care, stay well, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.